Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome back to our Exciting Let's Play, where we are very close to actually locating the Protagoras and performing a colonization test on Div 59. If we take a look at the interior of the Tycoon, you might recall that we are in the process currently of building a second steel mill. We are also in the process of building a probe launcher, and uh, we've completed training all the colonists we need to actually get Div 59 all colonized, uh, but we do still need a docking bay over here. So why don't we go ahead and commission that right off the bat, because uh, we know we're going going to need it sooner rather than later at this point in time there's no point waiting any further and we'll start accumulating some of those alloys hopefully they'll get produced a little bit faster as soon as the steel mill over here is done being built which shouldn't take too much longer separately from that as well i just want to address something really quickly i know last session i was talking about building a mushroom wall over here and potentially getting rid of these two insect farms and placing a memorial over here all that still kind of just up for discussion we don't at present need additional food production if we take a look at our situation over here we're we're doing just fine and keep in mind that this uh, balance per cycle is currently without these guys having actually been built so we are a-okay as far as food is concerned and if we take a look at our uh, fleet management situation we'll see that there are no more colonists to actually bring in either so it's not like our population is going to skyrocket by that much more we have four cryonic pods that still need to be woken up i think it'll be four plus another two that are currently at the center itself so another six aren't going to uh, break this you know, food bank, so to speak, uh, which in hindsight is actually a word, but not the one I meant to say. Nonetheless, uh, so all that to say this, we're not going to be, you know, going forward with any actions with regards to mushroom walls or, you know, storing waste or any of that stuff for at least some time. But I just wanted to float the idea uh, in case we wanted to save this space for anything in particular. And I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to build the memorials before we build a mushroom wall or any other food source. Separate from that as well, I just want to address a very interesting suggestion that was on the back of my mind and it was brought to the forefront uh, by the comments. And that has to do with these EVA airlocks. Now, at present, we have one in sector one and one in sector two, eating up quite a bit of space. But my plan was to specialize sector three for space. And so it makes sense to perhaps put more EVA airlocks over here and replace the ones in Sector 2 and Sector 1, right? Again, that would free up room for memorials, for additional food production, for cell housing even, right up against the uh, the edge, right? So there are a few reasons to, uh, to get rid of these EVA airlocks and then place two side by side over here and then perhaps one down over here or, you know what, like three or four down over here. Again, specializing Sector 3 in space while Sector 2 specializes in industry and Sector 1 specializes in food. With all that said, we're not going to be, again, making those changes right away. Just wanted to float the plan out there as we uh, resume time. And, uh, yeah, look to the preparation of our uh, cargo bay up over here, or our docking bay, sorry, up over here. Uh, that'll allow us to, yes, send these colonists over to Div 59 And separately, yes, the probe launcher down over here. That'll allow us to hopefully locate the Protagoras. Though, of course, we'll have to actually bring some uh, polymers over. And we're not actually able to store polymers anywhere right now. So why don't we go ahead and build up a stockpile here as well and make sure that it's assigned what duty. Let's get this guy over here storing uh, alloys. And then eventually we'll get this guy swapped to storing polymers because it's a bit closer to where the polymers will primarily be used. I think that makes more sense. And the electronics, sure, they have a bit of a distance to go to where they'll primarily be used, but it's not the end of the world. I mean, truth be told, this uh, switch in assignment isn't essential. I'm just doing it because of, uh, I don't know, my own personal neuroticism, I suppose. Uh, nonetheless, the tech lab is up and running once more and it is present. It is researching the waste treatment center, which should then allow us to... Uh, no, actually, we will not be able to unlock the next tier because, again, as I assume, we'll have to find the Protagoras first to uh, unlock this option. And once we research that, we'll have access to the, uh, the, the extra tier outside over here. That'll then allow us to get some of the upgrades that we were looking at previously, right? So we'll have to wait some time before that becomes available, but uh, that's uh, no harm, no foul because things are moving relatively smoothly right now. If we take a look at the system map, though, there is one major decision that needs to be made. And I did see some uh, feedback in the comments with regards to what to do at Chevy 34. And I've made up my mind, by and large, I think the comments were uh, sort of in keeping with where my heart was as well. So uh, let's go ahead and at Chevy 34, investigate the report. How can I resist? This might be our first contact with aliens. How can I resist? I mean, it's, it's a risk 
that I'm willing to take even more so now because all those losses from the previous session and the prior session now feel like uh, things from a, a long time ago. So I'm a bit more confident in now investigating the report. It'll take one cycle, but hopefully it won't result in the loss of the Calypso and uh, the five crew members aboard, right? Separately, the Galileo, I believe, is currently where is the Galileo at DV 59 or where are you at? No, you're actually standing by at the Tycoon. Why don't we get you to DV 59? Because I do believe we need a science ship there. Yes, to actually do anything. So let's go ahead and uh, send you up there. And hopefully by the time it gets there, we'll be ready to send colonists over, though. I, I do have my doubts. Obviously, this will take quite a bit of time to build. Our rate of alloy production isn't all that impressive. And separately as well, I should make note that if we take a look at fleet management, we are currently not mining iron or uh, or carbon, which is obviously problematic. Why don't we go ahead and focus on ironing, ironing, sorry, <laughs> I was looking at iron and my mind just completely slipped there. Why don't we go ahead and focus on mining ice is what I meant to say. And then when we're able to send probes out to find more deposits for, you know, iron and and and, and, and carbon in particular, we'll go ahead and reassign some of these mining ships. Right now, there's still plenty to collect, so I'm not nervous or, or concerned, uh, but it is something we have to, uh, you know, keep our keep our like eye out for, obviously. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the science ship that seems to have completed its task at, uh, yeah, Chevy 34. My goodness, I mean, I still see the ship, so hopefully that's uh, good tidings as people get injured at the EVA airlock in Sector 2. Hang on, let me just really quickly check over here. Sector 2, what are we looking at? People are happy. You know what, really quickly, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, at our DLS centers, I think I'm going to go ahead and intensify propaganda. It'll increase stability, it'll slow down uh, policy changes, but we don't change them that often. And if we are planning on changing them in the relatively near future, we might as well, might as well get this one out of the way sooner rather than later so it doesn't get in our way down the line. So let's go ahead and intensify propaganda over here. Um, after setting this policy, you will have to wait 10 cycles before another policy can be set in Sector 2. That sounds fine by me. And what this will do is this will actually give us a little bit of wiggle room across all of our sectors as far as stability is concerned, so that a sudden negative one isn't going to take us by surprise. And then, uh, you know, if we miss it, all of a sudden, the next thing you know, uh, people are dying and uh, I'll be like, oh, shucks, I wish I'd, you know, intensified propaganda. So let's get that out of the way nice and early as down over here, the steel mill is up and running as well, which is great to see. Hopefully our alloy production will now be able to keep up with consumption, at least during times of intense construction. And what's actually going on with resource management over here? We're trying to send uh, alloys from sector two, where we're keeping a minimum of 10, to sector one, where we're keeping a minimum of 30, and sector three, where we're keeping a minimum of 40. Why don't we go ahead and, geez, like, the thing is alloys get constantly moved to the, uh, to the uh, EVA airlocks, right? So we're not actually hitting those stockpile numbers. And not only that, but we're also seeing alloys get used up for our, uh, our fields over here. Can I prioritize where things go? Hmm. Don't seem to... Oh, yes, actually, it seems as though I can. If I send to Sector 1 as a second priority, then Sector 3 will be a higher priority, and so hopefully we'll see the uh, alloys go to Sector 3 first, and then they'll, they'll be able to build some of these uh, more urgently needed things up before... Uh, before these fields get built up. That sounds good to me. Okay, cool. I had a feeling that would be an option, but I, I just hadn't uh, explored it yet, I suppose. Now I've lost my train of thought. Where was I? Oh, right, yes. <laughs> Out over here at Chevy 34 to see if these, uh, if these people have survived. Upon nearing the location, it appears that what the crew member had actually observed was an unusually shaped geological formation. Oh, that's a real bummer. I was really hoping we were about to have a really strange and, and surreal moment there. I mean, after the tree from the previous sector, right? Or from the previous system. Either way, resume data listening protocol. Is there anything else to be done here? Uh, no. Okay, fine. Let's leave the planet and make our way towards what? Um, what's a safe... What's a safe bet? Can we get down to Plymouth 37? Or can we just go back up to Rokotansky? Oh, you know what, actually? That's not that bad. Let's, let's head on up that way and we'll uh, course correct as we get a little bit closer to that storm just to make sure that slight pink you know, tint is uh, not there, and the Calypso is safely able to navigate around the storm. That would make me very, very happy. Very, very happy indeed. As uh, we continue to uh, build stuff at the interior, we continue to worry a little bit about hull integrity, though, again, as soon as alloys arrive, things look a lot better, as you can see right away. And uh, you know what? Power is looking pretty good as well. Though, again, remember, that's because we've turned the electronics factory off, and we should keep doing that 
when uh, we don't have any you know resources to actually produce electronics with. So I, I really do need to uh, stay on top of that as the Calypso just needed that one additional command to avoid the storm over here. Cool. I'm glad that uh, little little trick worked. I hope I'm not like, you know, being cheesy there. I think it makes sense. You know, you course correct when you notice inclement weather, right? You course correct. And uh, and that's exactly what our science ships are doing. Uh, they're not they're not very good scientists if they don't know how to adapt to evolving situations, right? Uh, at least that's at least that's my two cents. Uh, nonetheless, things are looking pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. All comfy. Yes, down over here doing some construction. This uh, probe launcher will be done soon, I think. Let's go ahead and speed time up because uh, yeah, like I said, things are looking pretty comfy. Now, if I do want to build two EVA airlocks up over here, will they fit? I think they will. If we put one right up against the wall there, just uh, marking things with my finger over here to see if I'm able to place... Uh, I think so. Hang on, let's get rid of this road over here to check. Get rid of you and get rid of you. And let's go ahead and place an E... Or not actually place one, but but place one for, for measurement's sake, one over there and one over here. Yes, we will be able to fit two EVA airlocks over here, reducing the need for some across one of the you know other sectors. And again, we can place more down over here. They should fit, yeah, perfectly, snugly, as uh, all the you know edge uh, space-related uh, buildings fit. So we should be fine on that front. Let's go ahead and actually get rid of this because I don't want to see that temporarily waiting there. I don't think I'll forget my plan to build EVA airlocks across the edges over here to, again, specialize this uh, with the space specialization. Not currently accessible or not, not currently active, whereas Sector 2 has industry and Sector 1 does not have food, eh? Maybe, maybe when some of these get finished, maybe each of these individual farms count? I, I don't know. We'll see. And more people injured in Sector 3. Are we still happy here? We are. So even though that plus one from the Alternative Life Center is gone because we have our uh, propaganda here, uh, we're still happy. We're not at neutral. Uh, again, you can never be too sure about what's going to hit your stability, right? So I'm, I'm pleased enough with that adjustment. And down the line, we might make addi additional adjustments to, uh, you know, working hours or something. New request awaits my attention in Sector 1. What is going on over here? Administrator. The crew lives in anguish, having spent too long in a planetary system unsuited to our ongoing objectives, resulting in an increase in the severity of dead Earth sickness cases. Klein Munchie algorithm suggests that the tycoon must continually progress in its mission if the sickness is to be kept under control. And there you have it. Another negative one. Permanent hit to our stability. Acknowledged. Now, hang on a second. It says permanent. I was previously told that... Uh, it goes away when you leave the system. And it does seem that that's the case because when we were at the previous system for too long, we had a negative one and that negative one is no longer here. But now we've added this extra negative one from spending too long in the system at the bottom uh, in, in red uh, of the list there. So it does look like once we leave here, we should be fine. And we're very close to actually leaving here. So I'm not too nervous about that. But again, you can see the value of getting that uh, intensified propaganda up and running uh, because it's keeping people happy over here and over here. Whereas over here, well, they would have been neutral, but the Alternative Life Center is back up and running. So that's good to see. Again, I feel as though we'll probably need the... Um, we'll probably need the... What's the word I'm looking for? Memorials built up sooner rather than later, truth be told. And this tech lab is operating so very, very slowly. If we just take a look at the tech lab uh, within the tech tree, if I can find it, it's always a mystery to me where it is. There we go. I'm pretty sure there are other upgrades we can do to perhaps, um, yes, produce more science. It was mentioned in the comments. It's like, as soon as we can, we should focus on the tech lab. And I agree, my mind's been on that since our assistant promotion. There are so many options here to uh, produce more science more quickly. Uh, there are options here to actually research faster as well. And 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 the thing about research and and science is that the more you have more quickly, the faster everything else gets done. So it makes sense to prioritize the tech lab unless, of course, something else comes up that is an actual urgent priority because of mission objectives or something like that. Now, this stockpile is done and it's going to store alloys. This one is going to store, where are we? Uh, polymer, right? Let's go ahead and uh, get some resources moving from sector two, where we'll store 20, to sector three, where we'll store what? Um, Maybe 20 is not a bad idea. That should be enough for all of our needs here, right? We're just going to be building probes here. I don't think we'll need it for much else. And uh, otherwise, I think we can go ahead and adjust our prioritization of uh, alloy exports, right? Because Sector 1 now will need more to uh, actually keep up with repairs and the, uh, the, the construction of these fields. 
that sounds good. I'm, I'm glad I did the prioritization as I did. All this stuff is being built, including, yes, the docking bay. Will I build a separate cargo ship? Or will I reassign uh, the whale, for example? Because what's it doing right now? It's bringing ice in. We already have close to 200 ice. I don't think we need... Yeah, I don't think we're in a, in a rush for more ice, because if we look back at uh, Sector 1, we're, we're topped up on water, right? We're topped up on water. We're topped up on ice over here. We have a lot of ice here as well, so yeah, we can just reassign our whale to uh, to this docking uh, docking bay, the Amsterdam, as it were, and then we can go ahead and ship uh, ship people from here. I think that makes sense. The other option, of course, was to actually move using population management uh, colonists from sector three to two or one, and then use the docking bay there instead. But I kind of like having this separate, uh, the separation, I suppose. And also having a docking bay pushes us towards that uh, specialization for space. Now, with the docking bay actually built, let's go ahead and uh, check out fleet management. The whale, can I? No, I can't. So what we'll need to do is head on over to here and get the whale unassigned there and get it reassigned down over here whale yes and then i think we'll also need food right and food stockpiles are available here so we yeah we should be able to move from here so let's head on over to our system map head on over to dv 59 and uh, get the party started as far as establishing advanced nyokon colony infrastructure is concerned again just as a reminder the difference between the basic and the advanced uh or well they're 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 twofold i guess you could say one of those folds uh, is resources. There's a slightly larger investment in resources uh, and time, time being a resource as well, as far as I'm concerned. And the other fold is how with the advanced on the infrastructure will actually working in tandem with Tycoon's tech lab for the physiological and psychological evaluation. So I feel like that's a safer bet to make sure we don't have like a whole, you know, I don't know, interstellar kind of situation going down. Uh, yes, I'm referencing the movie. Uh, I think it's probably a better idea to get uh, these guys properly trained up. So establish advanced Nyokon colony infrastructure. And it also is nice to see that our colonist training center is where the tech lab is as well. So it kind of works nicely with how we've actually built up the uh, tycoon. So yes, let's go ahead and do that. And we will get the whale uh, involved with moving everybody over. Yeah. Currently it's dealing with colonists and, and, and or rather chronic pods and ice. Neither of those are important. So sure, let's get the whale assigned. And uh, hopefully it won't take too long to ship all of those goods and and get these guys all set up. Really excited for, for how that plays out. And then after that, it'll take an additional four cycles, it seems, to actually get all the work done. Where is the whale at present? It is right here, returning with some uh, some ice, its last shipment, in fact. And then, yeah, it'll make its way over to help develop our first colony. As back inside the Tycoon, are we able now to, yes, build uh, a probe? I don't think we have to set up auto-build. I think we're okay um, just kind of manually building them now. We're not in an urgent situation for any of our resources, truth be told. And... Uh, Beyond that as well, we are... I, I guess what I'll do is I'll, I'll build one to have in the pocket for when we arrive in the next uh, system. But apart from that, we're not really looking for much. There are no more points of interest as, as far as memory serves. If we take a look at the system map, have we found all of the planets? Maybe not. This was actually pointed out a couple of sessions ago that we could take a look at the orbital rings to see if we've spotted all of the planets. And uh, we've got Parenti 85, right? There might be one missing on the interior over here as a stockpile has been uh, hmm, seeing an accident in Sector 1. just want to make sure that it's going to be fixed automatically. That's that's the real reason to go back in there and, 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 and double check. Uh, but yeah, sorry, back to the system map. It does look like there might be another planet on this like highlight. Oh no, actually that's Falcon 74. So Falcon 74 on the inside, 2085 right outside of it. Then down over here we have Mac R. And the line after that has what? Uh... Tatra V8, and then just outside of that, we have Fargo 39. Just outside of that, we have, uh, I think, yeah, DeV 59. And then just outside of that, we have what? These, these two are actually pretty close to each other. I think we have Valiant 71. Outside of that, we have Plymouth 37. And then finally, all the way outside, Chevy 34. So we have, in fact, found all of the planets that need finding. Uh, let's go ahead and now seek out the Protagoras. Launch our probe. There's got to be a point of interest objective related out there somewhere. Seems like we're pretty close. Somewhere up over here. Oh, come on. Come on. I know you're here somewhere. There we go. Boom. Perfect. Let's go for it. Shouldn't take too long to get there, and we'll be able to progress our uh, primary objective at the same time as our secondary objective. But let's make sure we don't jump from this system before, yes, DV-59 has been 
colonized, right? I, I don't know how much work that entails. I don't know how much there is to do after our colonists arrive, but uh, I'm sure it's not instant, or I imagine it's not instant. We'll find out soon enough, I'm sure, as over here we have... Uh, hmm, some of the ice has been brought over here, right? Eh? That's not ideal. It's okay. We'll, we'll figure out how to clear that uh, afterwards as uh, the whale is making its way over with 33 alloys. That's fair enough. It'll take some time to collect everything we need over here. Because we need, what, 60 alloys, 60 food, and 60 colonists, something like that. So it'll take some time to get it all together, but uh, that's not a concern. As well, to speed time up as well, and hopefully see some more work get done over here. What is the situation as far as resource management? 10, uh, ten alloys. I'm trying to keep 10 here as well. What is keeping alloys away from you? Is it just supplying them to the EVA airlock, really? That's kind of wild. I do wonder if we should speed up the production of steel mills through uh, some technology, perhaps. Like, we get some coming through, and then immediately gets moved over to... Over here. Well, I, I guess we do have the urgent need um, with our... Uh, with our, you know, colonization efforts up over here, so I guess there is that. I just expected two steel mills to work uh, quickly enough in tandem, you know? But it's fine, it's fine. I'm not too concerned. I'm not too concerned. It's just a matter of uh, making sure this negative one from spending too long in the system doesn't escalate. And I, I don't think it does. It didn't at the previous system, but I don't want to take any chances, you know what I mean? I, I don't want to take any chances. Uh, we'll, we'll play it safe, but I think we're able to actually speed time up a little bit further even. If we just take a look at our food situation, with all of our cryonic pods now awake, we are still seeing a huge surplus in production. And uh, beyond that as well, we haven't even completed building all of these fields. So, you know, I'm not even... Not even stressed. Not even stressed. One thing I do want to check is we can feed 500 crew members. How many do we have here? 450. Oh, and would you look at that? We've actually completed our scan and discovered a new point of interest, which would have been the Protagoras. Over to the system map we go, and I imagine we'll have to send a science ship up over here. You know what? The uh, Well, I guess the Galileo is busy there, so the Calypso will head on over to the Protagoras to see exactly what's going on and maybe collect some more science or... Uh, we'll see. 4.2 cycles is not a short amount of time, as the whale is making its way back as well. Cool, cool, cool. I wish you could assign multiple cargo ships, but I, I guess I understand why you can't. It's to make things a bit more... Uh, it, it's to apply a bit more pressure, right? You have to let go of realism at times for the sake of gameplay, right? Although, otherwise, you could poke a hundred holes in a game like this, and... Uh, and then all the fun's gone all of a sudden, right? So I understand why it is like that, but I was just kind of curious for a moment. It's like, I wonder if it could have been slightly different. Not the not, not, not the biggest deal or anything, but more just a curiosity. How are we doing over here? Still bringing lots of alloys over. Yeah, okay, good stuff. Are we going to wait until the cargo ship is here? Or have we... Hang on, let me just check something here real quick. If we take a peek, looks like, yeah, we only have 33 of the 60 needed alloys. So why aren't we shipping uh, more to the actual docking bay while we can? My apologies, not the view I meant to go for. That is what it is. Fine, speed time up. Sector 1 has had an... Ac no, Sector 2 has had an accident. It is fixed automatically. Good stuff. We lack carbon, eh? Okay, fair enough. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at our fleet? We're fine. There's plenty out there. We're fine. It's just a matter of actually bringing it through. Mining ships are mining ice right now. Again, not urgent. Why don't we go ahead and seek out more iron, I suppose, because we will eventually need it, and I... Missed this. That would have been bad. The infirmary over here suffered an explosion. Did anybody die? Yes, one crew member was killed. Come on, man. Come on. They're happy. It's like the moment we hit extra hours, all of a sudden, uh, all their uh, all their joy is immediately gone. Are we topped up in terms of inhabitants? No, we are not. Why don't we go ahead and send some people over? Sector 3 needs 102 workers, so we could send, what, maybe... Uh, I guess we could send, like, 20 workers over from Sector 2. That's because the electronics factory is is off, though. So why not at Sector 1, or from Sector 1, we can send, uh, what? Maybe 10. Yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and send 10 workers over, or even 15. Cutting it kind of close if we do that, but sure. 10 from uh, Sector 1 to Sector 3 should do the trick. And hopefully we won't see uh, people dying in accidents. That's a real bummer. Like, give me at least a moment to respond, right? Come on. My, my, my eyes can only be in so many places at a time, but I suppose that's the uh, responsibility of an administrator is to keep an eye out for the potential of things to go wrong, right? Just like with Foresight, we enabled our policy for propaganda. With Foresight, I should also consider enabling our, uh, you know, population to move around and stuff. And, oh, hey, Sector 1 actually has its food specialization now, meaning food production buildings require 10% less water. 
fair enough. And uh, buildings produce 30% more waste. Interesting, because again, having more waste allows us to produce, you know, mushrooms or, or what have you. So that's uh, an interesting uh, combination of, of benefits, I suppose, as over here we're slowly chipping away. So I really hope that the uh, Protagoras over here gives us the opportunity to acquire some more science so that we can move a bit more quickly. But yes, do tell what happened with the Protagoras. Summary of intelligence on the Protagoras. Our probe has succeeded in locating the Protagoras. Visuals reveal that the Dulles station is encased in ice. It is not transmitting any signals. Interesting. As many of you said, this is, uh, you know, ice uh, ice fields. And, and so I guess it's just the colder side of it. The sun is right there. Is it not? Anyway, it is what it is. Uh, the spa space is cold. Transmission from the Calypso's team. We're holding position next to the Protagoras. Its hull has been ripped open and its exterior systems are severely damaged. Although the outer superstructure appears to be more advanced, its similarities to the Tycoon are striking. To access the station's main computer systems and retrieve vol coordinates, we must first break through the ice and get on board. Well, I guess we really only have one option, and that is to drill through the ice. The Calypso's team will carve out a passage to the Protagoras, enter the structure, and carry out reconnaissance of the interior. All right. Connaissance? Reconnaissance? One of those words. Drill through the ice. Let's go. Five cycles it'll take, so we still have some time to spend in this system. Not uh, the end of the world, even though it is literally been the end of the world. But yeah, what is going on over here? Have we shipped over more resources with the whale? We must have, because the whale is now coming back once more. So surely, yes, we have our 60 alloys over here and some food too. So we're getting there, we're getting there. Almost time. And what was completed over here? Migration. All right, good stuff. So still extra hours over here, eh? I did my math terribly wrong, right? Because there is still, you need like enough extra people to, uh, to stay on top of... Uh, uh, of your hour count. Why don't we go ahead and move, uh, let's say, 10 from Sector 2. 10 workers from Sector 2 to Sector 3, just to keep this in check, and hopefully that'll be enough, and hopefully we'll soon find more cryonic pods, you know, aboard the uh, Pythagoras uh, to, to bring over and, and, and further supplement our population, because things are getting tighter than I'd actually expected, and though we don't at present need the electronics factory up and running. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, soon enough that changes. And oh, we have a problem. We have a very serious problem. We are lacking iron. How can that be? This is how it can be. Let's go and get the Pandora chasing after iron alongside the uh, Quicksilver over here. Uh, let's get rid of silicon because we don't need that anymore. We, we need we need iron. Oh no. Oh, I done goofed. Real bad. Real bad. Where, where are the closest iron deposits? Up over there? Really? Ooh, that's not good. That's not good. We need additional probes to seek out closer minefields if uh, if any are, uh, are potentially available. Oh, no. Now, again, we're not using alloys to build anything, right? But uh, we are using alloys to keep the uh, EVA airlocks operational and uh, repairing the actual Tycoon. We have a bit of a runway here. Things are okay, but uh, I, I don't want to see iron be at a zero ever really the amount we saw there was already like the, the the length of time we saw it at zero there already was extremely disconcerting so um let's try and stay on top of that <laughs> oops is i guess what i should say oops that was not ideal nonetheless we are moving on from that and uh and, and we're fine we're fine we're fine it's not the end of the world again even though it literally has been the end of the world how are our colonists looking they are still located in sector three uh, we are still okay as far as food and stuff is concerned across the board, it looks like. So that's all well and good. And food production over here is going to continue to accelerate as we're seeing now 14.4 per five cycles or 29.8 in this sector alone uh, every five cycles. That's crazy. That's awesome. Oh, and uh, the Calypso's already done its uh, work at the Protagoras. So I want to go ahead and check out the uh, situation. And hopefully it's not a very risky situation to be in. Come on now. We have entered the Protagoras. There are signs of past conflict and floating corpses everywhere. We have found numerous cryopods, probably from emergency crew evacuation procedures. Many of the station sectors are depressurized and heavily damaged. Almost all areas show signs of looting. We have managed to run diagnostic routines by connecting to one of the station's terminals. Following Dolo's confidentiality protocols, the mission report on the Protagoras' status has been encrypted and can be analyzed via the tech lab. So there is our Protagoras diagnostic analysis resume data listening protocol can we actually recover these cryopods can we not really really i suppose we leave the protagoras then 
Oh, okay, we can. Oh my goodness. Okay, those numbers are a little bit larger than I'd anticipated. Yikes. I don't know if we can sustain that just quite yet. Nine, okay, actually, no. No, no, no. Why am, I, why am I so concerned? That's an extra 95 food per um, five cycles, right? And we're producing a surplus of only 12.2 per five cycles? Really? Is that... Is that really the case? <laughs> okay, maybe we do need those mushroom walls sooner than I'd anticipated previously. Nonetheless, and the data listening protocol over here. Uh, we do have to be quick about this because, of course, we want to make sure that we are, uh, you know, jumping sooner rather than later because we do want to make sure that uh, that negative to stability doesn't escalate any further, right? So uh, things to keep in mind as I try to seek out additional iron deposits in particular. There doesn't seem to be anything closer than what we've already got uh, access to. So I suppose there's no reason to rush chasing after a new one. Fair enough. I mean, there seems to be some opportunities all the way up over here, but we're not going to send mining ships and cargo ships through the storms repeatedly, right? Like, that's that would be, that'd be ridiculous unless we, yes, move the tycoon closer to here. But is that necessary? Do we want to put people through that hardship and, and dealing with the batteries and stuff like that? Because uh, we don't have any setup in Sector 3, right? So fair enough, fair enough. I suppose we'll leave things as they are. Fair enough, or perhaps I should say ferrous enough. My goodness, that's terrible. Please don't unsubscribe because of that one. Uh, let's go ahead and, and, and cancel the probe launch, leave Scanview, and head back into the uh, interior and see if 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 things are, in fact, okay. And, and, and I think they are. I think they are. Separately, though, the tech lab over here is still stuck researching the waste treatment center. We could switch over to the uh, uh, diagnostic analysis. Why don't we go ahead and do that? It'll, it'll save our waste treatment center progress, so we can always flip back to it. But while we're collecting all that science from the Protagoras, let's actually dedicate it to something that needs to be done before we can leave, right? So let's go ahead and focus on this, and then we'll resume our focus on the waste treatment center and unlock the next tier of technology afterwards. I think that's the right call. As food and all is looking pretty good over here, how is the, uh, how is the whale actually doing? I believe it's shipped over almost all the food we need and pretty soon it'll be able to ship over colonists as well. Now, the question is, will I actually need to check colonists over here, or are we fine? I think we're probably fine. Uh, I think we should also probably switch this off because we don't need more ice, but we will want to start collecting those cryonic pods ASAP, and we also want to avoid that negative to stability from having too many cryonic pods, right? I believe patches actually changed how that works. The threshold is no longer at 250, but instead it's now at a percentage of the population of the sector where those cryonic pods are stored. So if you have more frozen people than warm people, uh, that's when people will start to get upset. Seems to be the uh, the overall direction of things. Carbon. Do we urgently need carbon? No. And if we did, we have some available out there. Fair enough. Okay. Cool. We're okay. We're okay. Down over here, mining ship's getting some repairs done. All right. Sector 1 has had an accident, but uh, it's automatically being fixed. Cool. And there's the Protagoras Diagnostic Analysis having been unlocked. And an incoming transmission. What do we have here? Administrator. Analysis of the Protagoras has been completed. Frozen, mostly depressurized and out of power, the Protagoras has suffered critical internal and external damage. Sectors 3 and 4 do remain sealed and pressurized. Signs of looting are present throughout the structure, with reports indicating that UN forces attacked. Wiping out whatever resistance had been present. They have destroyed and gutted the infrastructure required to generate full jump coordinates. The devices containing the coordinates of Remus have been taken by the Etimaneki. We have received a message from the PA of the Protagoras, Valhalla. Man, this does not bode well at all i'm starting to feel like the un were the bad guys after all but uh, we'll find out what does uh, the valhalla have to say administrator part of me rem remembers you i am glad to see you and your crew are still alive and to be carrying ixian what an achievement my my mind is gone i can feel it the Protagoras, designed to be an ark for what remained of mankind 
was attacked by the UN superstructure, the Etamanenki. Before my last electric breath, I, I have launched the decryonization protocols. With only two sectors left, the surplus population will be transferred to the tycoon. Please help the Protagoras. I have programmed a delayed data transfer that, that will send across the Edaman Nanki's self-similar signature once you have guaranteed the integrity of this structure. They, they plan to reach Remus. Follow their full signature and, and you will find our new home. What you will do once you reach your destination is, is only up to you. Farewell, Administrator. For the few who stand in the light and many who dwell in the dark, you carry the fate of us all. Hang on a second. Excuse me? What hex have you put upon me? What is... It sounds like uh, the Valhalla, or Valhalla, no the, I suppose, is waking people up of his own volition, and now we have to more urgently rescue them? I'm a little concerned here. What's this next transmission now? Administrator, new mission objectives have been set. To receive the Etamanenki signature, we will need to free the Protagoras from the ice, perform critical repairs, provide resources to support their crew, and via a connection to the Tycoon, reboot the core systems of the Protagoras. That doesn't seem too bad, though it sounds like we'll have to actually move the Tycoon into that ice field and uh, potentially risk damaging our own selves as a result of doing that. Uh, it says over here we have to repair the superstructure, provide resources to support the Protagoras crew. So yes, they are in fact waking up. We have to mine the ice that's trapping the Protagoras. Okay, fair enough, easy enough. And we have to research the retractable telescopic pole upgrade for the Protagoras Diagnostic Analysis Technology. All right, let's go ahead and close this transmission. One of those things is easy enough to jump onto immediately. We have the uh, upgrade over here. It'll cost 30 science. We're almost there. So why don't we go ahead and do that as opposed to focusing on the waste treatment center as was the initial plan. But uh, this is again, more I guess, urgently required, but it says allows the tycoon to temporarily power other ships, structures, or stations. Very interesting, very intriguing, uh, very concerning as well. Are we producing enough power to actually do that without hurting our own, you know, capabilities, our own power supply? I don't know, but let's go ahead and research this. We won't have to apply it for some time yet, but when the time does come, I want to make sure we're prepared with additional solar panels, or at least by shutting down some of the systems on board so that we're not draining too much power. Separately, we have more injuries, more accidents. I mean, no one's actually dying, which is good. It's just, you know, random chance of, of accidents occurring. Everything's optimal and people are happy as well. Separately though, let's go ahead and take a look at the system map over here and see the circumstances at the Protagoras. So we have what? 388 ice to mine. That's not concerning at all. 950 crown pods to collect. That's not necessary for our objectives, but we'll of course be doing that nonetheless. And separately, if I take a look at this event over here, there you go. All right, fair enough. So what's going on? The Protagoras PA has stipulated that once the station is returned to acceptable operational levels, the Vol signature of the Etamananki will be transferred across to us. We must fly to the rescue of our Dolos colleagues. Now, many of you have pointed out, if I recall correctly, and I apologize if I'm getting this wrong, but the Etamananki is the name of what we think may have been the Tower of Babel, is that right? Uh, which is kind of an interesting, it's all starting to make sense now. The Etamananki was the UN's attempt at collecting, you know, all the cultures of, of, of I assume, uh, Earth and, and, and building a massive structure and, and what didn't happen, of course, with the Tower of Babel is uh, lifting off from Earth and, and going into space, though so, uh, that was kind of like the intent, right? Uh, nonetheless, pretty cool, pretty cool. Love the naming conventions in this game. They're fantastic. Uh, either way, moving on. Transmission from the Calypso's team. Administrator, we arrived on site and met with the crew of the Protagoras. We were welcomed like heroes. People crowded around us, reaching out and touching us as if they doubted our existence. Some of the older crew members looked on with skepticism. The crew are weak, tired, and disoriented from cryonic sleep. They've been traumatized by the horrors they suffered at the hands of the Etamananki crew. They provided us with a complete diagnostic rundown of their structure 
We can now allocate resources and begin repairs. Now, to be perfectly clear, I'm still concerned that we are, in fact, the bad guys, right? And uh, and that's why the Etamananki tried to uh, cut off the Protagoras before it arrived at Remus and, and did God knows what. I, I still wouldn't be surprised if we're the bad guys. And honestly, I'm still somewhat convinced that we are the bad guys. But we'll see if, if it turns out that the UN were the bad guys all along. Uh, because, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sold in either direction. Now, do we want to focus on uh, reestablishing the internal infrastructure and food distribution first? or repairing the superstructure of the Protagoras. So the team of the Calypso will assist the crew of the Protagoras in repairing key structures such as the hull, solar panels, and external communication systems, okay? Or reestablishing the internal infrastructure and food distribution will have our crew assist them with internal equipment repairs and food distribution. I mean, food sounds a lot more urgent, right? So I almost feel like it should be food. We have plenty of food stocked up, so perhaps we should take care of that before we find ourselves, you know, uh, awakening more cryonic pods and 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 being just in a bit of a, a trouble situation. So why not go ahead and wait until the whale is done shipping food over to DV-59, which it is. So then we can separately do what? Again, I, I don't want to reassign one of our cargo ships that's currently bringing iron in. Though alloys right now are looking a fair sight better. We're going to lose a lot of those alloys to helping the, uh, the Protagoras build up its infrastructure, right? Oh great, a DLS center has been deactivated. Come on. You're the ones who are supposed to be keeping order, and meanwhile you're seeing accidents? Come on. Um, Alright, in all seriousness, what to do? Do we go ahead and finally build an additional cargo ship? I feel like maybe it's finally actually a necessity. So let's go ahead and build an additional cargo ship over here. The Koala, love it. And uh, we'll get that doing some shipping as well, perhaps bringing iron in, uh, if not uh, if not helping the Protagoras out. Either way, we'll, we'll figure it out. The whale is going to perhaps be reassigned to the Dampier. Dampier? I don't know if that's... Uh, I don't know. Uh, because over here, it'll be able to more easily access food stockpiles and uh, more easily just ship the food over. And then we can go ahead and, uh, you know, wait as alloys get collected, I suppose. It'll, it'll be a waiting game either way, but at least this way, food will be very quickly shipped over. I don't know if there's an actual urgency or if we can kind of take our time, but uh, I don't want to risk too much, obviously. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Now, Sector 1 over here has extra hours. That's not ideal. Can we switch anything off to deal with that? I, I almost wonder about switching this EVA airlock off over here. We'll save nine workers. As those chronic pods get uh, awoken here, we'll be able to uh, maybe actually ship, uh, or maybe actually turn this thing uh, back on. If I flip you off, hull integrity is negative 20. Again, we got a bit of a runway. This will allow us to accumulate alloys as well. So there is that. And it does take us back to optimal working conditions. This will be temporary. But maybe worthwhile. And the thing is, once we get the uh, whale or whoever up over here, we'll not only ship uh, food over, we'll also bring uh, those chronic pods back with the same uh, cargo ship, which now I'm almost wondering if the koala shouldn't have been just built over here and, and used immediately for that purpose. Nonetheless, ice is still looking okay. Water is still looking okay. So that's not an urgent situation. Iron remains a bit of a concern, but there's still plenty out there to collect. You know what? Not enough. Not enough, though. Now that I see what our objectives actually include, I'm going to go ahead and say that there's not enough iron out there. So why don't we go ahead and launch another probe and just seek out one of those uh, deposits that I was kind of eyeing earlier. Uh, where are we? Somewhere up over here. I thought I saw a sweet spot. That's carbon primarily. There's some iron there. Medium resource estimate. Something more up over here. Ooh, that looks juicy. Sure, let's head on up over there, and we'll get some more probes coming as well to to, to recognize the fact that we're going to be here for a, a fair bit longer. Let's go ahead and build some more of these probes, but keep an eye out for polymer as well, because the, uh, the, Py the Pythagoras needs uh, polymer as well, so we're going to drain quite a few of our resources. Iron again, we have absolutely none. The, the, the shipping distances are quite large as well, eh? These guys are... Why, why are we not going up over here? Is this really further than this? I suppose it must be. We got some iron up all the way, all the way over here as well. Yikes. At, at this point in time, I do wonder if I shouldn't move the uh, Tycoon like over here or something, you know? Iron, carbon, ice. It's all closer. Moving all the way up to uh, the Protagoras is, is a lot easier. I said Pythagoras earlier, didn't I? Every time I tr go to say Protagoras, I think about Pythagoras instead. That's my bad. But... Uh, but yeah, we could move the Tycoon like over here or something. It seems to be a lot more central to a lot more resources or even just down over here. I'll consider that, though. If we are going to do that, we have to first build batteries for Sector 3, right? Because these guys don't have uh, power otherwise when uh, when moving. When moving, these solar panels obviously stop operating. 
and that's not uh, ideal. Let's go ahead and get the whale doing what? Not the whale, sorry, the koala. Let's go ahead and, yeah, reassign you. The koala, let's unassign you from uh, the Nagoya, and let's reassign you to the uh, Dampier, Dampier, I'm not sure. Uh, where are we, koala? Let's go on and do that. And why don't we go ahead and get, yes, some work started over here with the Protagoras. A hundred alloys and a hundred food. Like, that is a little nerve-wracking. That is a little nerve-wracking. Food is okay, but those alloys, and we're gonna need a hundred more on top of that, and then 60 uh, polymers as well. All right, reestablish internal infrastructure and food distribution. Hopefully that's the right first call. And let's go ahead and get the koala doing that. It'll have more than enough food right off the bat. Uh, alloys will, of course, take some time to ship over, but uh, I think that's fine. As up over here at the V59, we're waiting for a few more colonists, I imagine. And the whale is delivering how many? 33? That is not enough. That'll take us to 45. It'll be one more shipment. And then four more cycles before the colonization of the V59 is completed or begins in earnest. I'm not yet sure, but uh, we'll find out soon enough, I'm sure. But yes, let's go ahead and get the... Uh, koala well currently it's busy with uh with shipping food over but when it's done doing that let's get it bringing uh chronic pods back as the whale is reassigned to what what should the whale do what should the whale do well it's currently still sending uh colonists over so we'll keep it unassigned for the time being to any resources because i don't want it to stockpile anything over here by mistake i want to reassign it to over here and then it can start bringing back iron as well right that sounds good to me but that does mean we have to keep an eye on uh, on the whale and make sure it doesn't actually ever sit idle because uh yeah one more shipment of colonists and then we should be good to uh to, to reassign it as as described earlier oh it was completed its scan i believe that's all the way like up over here was it is that where we sent it or was it up over here? Yeah, I think up over here. Okay, lots of iron, lots of uh, carbon. Good stuff, good stuff. Again, if we wanted to get the Tycoon moving, we could. I just don't want to be inside this uh, ice field or whatever it is. And if we take a look at the tech lab up over here, we'll see the Tycoon doesn't... Oh, the Tycoon hull here does have some upgrades available. Um, none have to do with ice in particular. Fair enough. They have to do with movement, and they have to do with... Uh, with impacts, but nothing else. All integrity continues to drop. A little, again, concerning, obviously, but we are trying to preserve alloys and, you know, worker hours over here. Those cryonic pods aren't going to be coming through anytime soon. If we take a look at population management, can I bring... I should be able to bring some people over from Sector 2 to Sector 1. Sure. From Sector 2 to Sector 1, let's go ahead and bring in, what, 20 people? That should be enough wiggle room, right? Workers only. And we have enough housing. Yes, we have, we have more than enough housing. That should be okay. Start that migration, and then we can get the EVA airlock working again to uh, to make sure all integrity doesn't go below 25%. Because that's where again we take a hit to stability, right? We got to be we got to be really careful about that. We got to be really careful about that. Yes, we're bringing alloys over. It looks like, and there's our retractable telescopic pole unlocked. So back to the uh, tech lab over here, and over to our waste treatment center, I suppose. Or do I, in fact, take a look at the Tycoon Hull? Not that we can actually do any of these just quite yet. We have to unlock the next tier of technology. So, Waste Treatment Center it is. And there's the population transfer completed up over here. So, let's go ahead and turn this EVA airlock back on. Hours still looking okay. Working conditions still optimal. Good stuff. These uh, fields are looking pretty good as well. I mean, food is... We're fine. We're fine. Even when a bunch of those chronic pods get uh, woken up, we'll be okay. What I need to keep an eye on, though, is the limit of 500 people being fed uh, every five cycles in one mess hall, because as soon as this population grows by another 40, we'll need an additional mess hall, right? Um, or I should say when it grows by another 41, technically speaking, we'll need an additional mess hall. We have the room for it. We, we planned ahead, which is always nice to do, but I just need to keep that in mind before we find ourselves on the back foot. Over here separately, though, we're stockpiling alloys to be sent over to the, uh, uh, to the, hang on a second, Protagoras. I keep thinking Pythagoras. It's hard not to. It's hard not to. Um, is, is nothing here yet, really? We got, uh, where, where is the koala? This is the whale. This is the Pandora. This is the Quicksilver. Koala, koala, where are you at? Where are you at? Back to the interior. Might just be waiting. That's well, not waiting over here. That's kind of strange. Is it... 
I missing some dotted lines over here, or what's going on? It's not delivered anything. Hang on a second. I don't see any red dots. Fleet management, the koala. It's been assigned something, but it's not going to be paying attention to that. The ship is on the way, it says. But I think it always says that whether a ship is actually on the way or not. All right, well... Give it some time, I guess. Not sure what's going on there, but up over here, the V-59 at least is seeing some progress. Where you at, Koala? What's going on? Quicksilver, Whale, and there was a ship that just arrived on the Tycoon, but uh, that's one of our like regular cargo ships. Do we have a problem here? Is it just waiting? Because it's not. there's not enough alloys over here that's probably it. It's just waiting for an additional, what, four alloys so it can make a shipment of 33. Why not focus on food first? Why not prioritize food? Come on now. That's a little uh, silly, I think. Let's go ahead and deal with the resource management over here. Sector 2 is fine. Sector 1, let's go ahead and uh, get you storing a minimum of 20 alloys, I suppose. And why don't we go ahead and deprioritize Sector 3 and uh, prioritize Sector 1 over here so that it's stockpiling for uh, the EVA airlock as well as the shipment of alloys heading out, right? We should have... Oh, actually, we don't have any alloys in stockpile up over here. Really? How does, uh, how does that make any sense? Is it all up over here? 29 and a bunch, I assume, over here then? 40. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, we don't... No, we don't, we don't need that. We don't need that. Here, 10. <laughs> Drop that down, drop that down. We don't need that many in uh, in Sector 3 right now. Sector 3 doesn't have any EVA airlocks. That's just uh, not right. There's no other way to put it. Cool. They're both back up and running, and hopefully we can get uh, the Koala getting its work done shortly as well. Okay. Oh, boy. It's like these little things, you know? It's these little things. And I almost wonder if I want to pause this construction over here. You know, just go ahead and cancel this bad boy over here because we don't need it just quite yet, and that'll save us 16 alloys, right? Are we in such desperate times? I don't... I don't necessarily think so, um, but I'll play it safe for the time being, because if I know one thing, I know we don't need more food right now. Even though there's a negative 0.4 per 5 cycles listed right now, that's not the reality. As the uh, Galileo has completed its action at the V-59, Pioneers. All right, this should be interesting, folks. Over to, I guess, our first colony. The temporary test colony has now been established. The colonists will periodically transmit reports on their progress. These will provide us with valuable field data. Fair enough. Leave the planet. I guess our job here is done. And we can send the Galileo back to the Tycoon. Cool. A little anticlimactic, perhaps, but uh, I'm curious to see what actually comes of it. If, if it's just kind of going to sit there idle or if it's actually going to feed us anything. And still no resources have been brought over, eh? That's a... Okay. All right. Fair enough. Maybe a bit foolish of me to... Uh, oh, looks like... Things just got loaded up over there. Yeah, yeah, no more 33 alloys over here, or 29 when we last checked. And the koala, I assume, is now on its way over with 30. Not 33, but 30 alloys. I guess this one's not leveled up, right? We only recently built it. My goodness. So that's three. That's four round trips to the Protagoras just to get uh, enough alloys there. And then another four round trips, I assume, to just get enough food there. So we're actually stuck here for quite some time longer. And again, I'm not, like concerned about that per se but it also isn't ideal it also isn't ideal and i just wonder i just wonder if we move one of our science ships down here or something just so that we can get uh chronic pods coming through right because otherwise we'll be sitting for another god knows how long just shipping 950 chronic pods over which is also not ideal uh now i don't want to lose one of our uh you know iron shipping uh individuals here we get the whale uh dealing with chronic pods but for that we'll have to reassign it to the first sector so why don't we go ahead and reassign the cataphract down to uh the nagoya go ahead and do that sure because again the, the mining ship only comes back here to repair it doesn't actually deposit any goods or anything so that's fine and then we can actually get the uh whale over here reassigned to sector one where I think it actually started, if I recall correctly. But yes, let's get the whale up over here. And let's actually get the whale now bringing cryonic pods back as well. 950 is a lot. We have to make sure that we are, in fact, sustainable before we find ourselves in an awkward position. But uh, otherwise, we might need to build some additional cargo ships to bring more iron in as well. Because, again, we're hitting zeros 
uh, very often now. But that is because we have two steel mills, of course. But but still, I, it doesn't make me comfortable seeing this uh, down at zero. Just uh, just a little nerve wracking. Let's put it that way. We have plenty of silicone now. We actually don't have silicon. Silicon. I always mix those two up. And it gets extremely awkward, as I mentioned in the comments to some of you. It gets extremely awkward when I mix it up when talking about the uh, tech hub in uh, in San Francisco, is uh, well, those two things mean two very different things. Um, but no, we're still not bringing any in, eh? No, we're not. And it's, it's not a priority. I think we have enough electronics for the time being. We don't need any additional. Though I would like to pick as much up as we can before we leave. And the same thing goes for these polymers out there as well. Why leave those polymers behind, obviously? But not in a rush right now to scoop that stuff up. Though I should perhaps uh, reassign some of these guys to mine uh, the iron. And then eventually what we'll do is we'll prioritize the mining of the ice uh, at the uh, Protagoras, got it right that time, I think, uh, to actually free them up, right? I think that makes sense. But for the time being, we are looking okay over here. The Protagoras is seeing, yeah, just 30 alloys brought over. Fair enough. And an accident in Sector 2. Sector 2 fire station. It'll be fixed on its own. Fair enough. And we could actually turn the polymer refinery off as well. Again, doesn't really do much for us. Working conditions were optimal as it is, but... Uh, Hey, we don't have any carbon to actually do anything with, so might as well switch it off as uh, as we give people a chance to rest. Oh, you know what? I I ordered the dismantling of this just a little bit too late. Didn't actually cancel as I assumed. It's been built now. It's fine then. Not the end of the world. And uh, again, food is food is still looking okay. I'm pretty sure that balance isn't entirely accurate. How could it have dropped so significantly without us actually having woken up any more than four people? Right? That 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 wouldn't make any sense unless. No. See, what happened was when the uh, Valhalla was talking to us, it sounded like it was actually sending a population over onto the Tycoon. Uh, but it's not, that's not what happened, I don't think. It's just about like getting those guys sustainable on the Protagoras in, I itself. Though down the line, I wouldn't be surprised if some of those people end up on our ship as well. We'll see, we'll see. Let's not assume too much, right? You know what they say about assuming. And that's uh, never an ideal situation to be in. But things are looking all right. Let's speed time up a little bit. Things are, are calm. Once more, the calm before the storm, perhaps. But what do we have? I have to build the retractable telescopic pole via the construction panel in the exterior view. We'll do that when hull integrity is looking a little bit better or when we're low on alloys and we can't actually improve hull integrity. Let's just get ourselves healed up to at least about 600, 700 before we uh, you know, you know, turn our attention away from repairs and focus on this construction. That won't be important for a while yet still. And otherwise, we can actually keep a track of our progress over here. Bring 100 alloy and 100 food. So do we really only need to focus on one of those two things? I really hope we're able to do both. And, and this will update based on which option we chose. Nonetheless, I think food is perhaps more important because, you know, people will starve to death, right? <laughs> so hopefully we made the right call there. I think we did, but uh, time will tell, I'm sure. As, uh, yeah, things are flowing nicely enough. I think what I'll do is after this technology has been researched we'll see if our cargo ships have anything that can i don't know allow them to maybe move faster that sounds like a good idea or perhaps store more resources yeah 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 maybe 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 that's the right call just so that they're moving more at any given time right they're not coming back with you know 30 iron they're coming back with i don't know 40 iron instead for each round trip just speeding things along and and making things just that much more comfortable as it looks like cryonic pods are now arriving and being dropped off over here to be then taken to the cryonic center and awoken. Now, what is our population situation looking like? In sector one, we have room for another 40 people, plus minus one, literally. Uh, in sector two, we have room for another, what, 70 people? Sounds good. In sector three, we have room for another uh, 90 people. Again, plus minus one. So we have room enough for quite a few people, not for everybody, but for quite a few people. And that's where I start to wonder if, uh, you know, cell housing is actually not a bad idea. Like, if we get rid of the EVA airlock over here to build it in Sector 3 instead, we'd be able to fit one cell housing. Not nearly enough. Or we could fit more of these optimized quarters or something, right? Or do we, you know, build it down over here? We have room over here if we get rid of the insect farms. Like, there's options. So if we do that, we won't have room for our mess hall that we'd need over here. There's options, but we, we might actually have to pull the trigger on the cell housing over here and the minimal quality accommodations because uh, they, they fit, what, twice as many more than, uh, than the optimized quarters, right? So 
that's something I, I think I'll need to concern myself with. Though, uh, again, let's not forget if we take a look at the tech tree, if we go ahead and I believe get uh, suspended beds, we're able to then get demotic quarters over here to get 91 crew members in high quality accommodations in each one of these buildings. Though, I wouldn't be surprised if demotic quarters, much like optimized quarters, require us to demolish our old buildings and replace them with new ones. So we just got to be prepared for, for some of those major investments that are right around the corner. Those chronic pods are coming through, people are going to be woken up and uh, they're going to start applying pressure pretty much immediately. We'll have to redistribute them, obviously, and fortunately we have, you know, jobs for them to do. We can always also, of course, get, uh, you know, supported working hours to help with stability. Uh, because if we end up with surplus workers, that's a good way to make sure we're actually taking some advantage of it, right? And separately as well, uh, at least we have a plan for food if it becomes kind of tight, right? Like, like we, we have plans for everything. And boy, I do like having plans for things. I do like having plans for things. But folks, those plans and these plans and everything else, the game's plans, I suppose, will not come to fruition this session because this is where we're going to call it a session. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this one. I certainly did. Uh, a lot of discoveries over here. Some anticlimactic, some climactic. I'm very curious about the UN and uh, and Dolos' relationship. I mean, God, I'm still not sure who the good guy or the bad guy is. But uh, hey, you know, we're putting humanity first. We're making our best efforts. So for the time being, whatever Dolos may have been, we at least, we ourselves are the good guys. And, and, and that's the hope and that's the plan as we take riskier and riskier moves to uh, to protect humanity. I'm just... I'm just not sure how uh, how much longer we can spend at this system, though. We have to be very quick about uh, saving the Protagoras so that uh, we don't see an escalation in stability issues, obviously, right? We're already seeing that negative one, and I'm just a bit concerned that it'll continue to go up and up. And if these guys end up at neutral, all it takes is a bad accident um, or who knows, you know, just something going wrong at an alternative life center or something for, for things to go completely sideways and people to start dying. So maybe it's time to invest in those memorials. Maybe it's time to invest in some additional policies and stuff as well. And maybe it's time to invest in some additional cargo ships as well to bring more iron in because that is really starting to uh, to cause me a little bit of concern. We have no more to mine out there, only a thousand. So that translates to a thousand alloys and I just don't know if that's going to last as long as all of this and then some. Because when we all arrive at the new system, we have to keep repairs going uh, without actually knowing where iron is available and without actually having any of it mined or anything, right? So quite a few concerns, but that is for future Party Elite to worry about, folks. If you had a good time, please don't hesitate to leave a like and a comment down below. As always, makes a big difference in just letting me know what people are enjoying on the channel. And as always, of course, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.